Hi, my name's Al and today I'm going to show you how to check for a worn chain on your bike and how to replace it. If you replace your chain early and often enough then it'll save you a heap of cash. I'll also show you how to replace your cassette should that be worn out soon. In order to check the state of wear of your chain you're going to need a chain checker. This simple one from Park is one of my favourites. It will show three states of wear, either not worn at all, where the chain tool will not sit in the chain, uh, or worn to 0.75%, which means it will sit in on that side, or worn to 1%, which will mean it will sit in on that side. If your chain's not worn at all, obviously you don't need to replace it. If it's worn to 0.75%, it's a good idea to replace it in order to get the maximum amount of life from your chain rings and your cassette. If it's worn to 1%, you definitely need to change your chain and it's quite probable that your cassette will need to be changed as well. And you're also going to need to check your chain rings. Most manufacturers these days use some kind of quick release link. In fact, the only people out there that don't are Shimano. So KMC, Connex, RAM all use a quick release link such as this. Uh, most of them can be undone by hand by pushing the links together and separating them as shown. If your quick release connector is a SRAM 10 speed or 11 speed link then they're really hard to undo by hand. You can do it with pliers but you're better off using some proper master link pliers such as these from Park MLP ones. They make it a real breeze. Nice and easy. They also work well if you've got a, a really stubborn just general uh, nine speed link or a link from another manufacturer. With the chain split we can remove it. If you are going to change your cassette then now's a good time to do it and you won't be putting a nice clean new chain over the dirty cogs of an old cassette. In fact, whilst you're at it, it's a good idea to clean the jockey wheels and the chain rings too. Take the wheel out, we need a couple of tools to remove the cassette. With the wheel out, we can get on with removing the cassette. To spin off the uh, quick release, you've got one fitted. Put the spring and the nut back on the end so you don't lose them. We need to hold the cassette still with a chain whip and then we need a cassette lock ring tool to undo the lock ring. It's probably quite tight, they should be quite tight if they've been done up properly. The cassette should Perhaps with a bit of wiggling, come off the uh, freehold body. Okay, so now to fit the new cassette, each freehold body will have a, a section which is slightly larger uh, space, so one of the splines will be smaller, and you need to match that up with the larger spline on the cassette in order to slide them on into place. It's a good idea if you've got an aluminium freehold body such as this that you use a decent quality cassette so where the main sprockets are all mounted on an aluminium carrier it's less likely to damage it. You can't really go wrong putting this on but you can try but they won't fit. As long as you put them on in the right order. Okay, so that's all of the cogs on there. Finally the, the lock ring. I like to put a bit of grease on it. Spin that on. I need to tighten that to 40 newton meters. Now we're ready to fit the new chain, 
thread it through the rear mech, around the cassette, through the front mech or the chain device properly, make sure it's all fitted as it should be. And you need to be in the biggest chain ring and the biggest sprocket at the back in order to check the chain length. On a full suspension bike, the bike should be compressed. Uh, this will account for any chain growth which might occur during the suspension travel because otherwise there's a danger that the rear mech might get ripped off during full compression. So we're looking to see how many links we need to remove in order for the rear mech to be stretched out in that position. We're joining this chain with a quick link, a quick release link. So we're going to need two male ends to the chain, like that. And I've counted that I need to remove uh, the ninth pin down. So just here, which will leave another male end. So pop that into the last gate on the chain tool and drive the pin all the way out. You can save that bit, chuck it in your pack, might be handy one day. So we put one half of the link in one end of the chain and the other half in the other end. On this 10 speed link there is an arrow which indicates the direction of travel so make sure you get that right. We've got a type 2 SRAM mech here which has got a super stiff spring so to make it easy to join it we can bring this locking feature into play make it a lot easier to join and you can either pull the chain apart to connect it or if it's a bit tough like this one then just pedal the link onto the top top run and have a good hack at the pedals like that and it will be joined properly so that's it, it's your lock it's really easy but it is a key thing that you can do you save yourself loads of money just keep checking that chain, get yourself a chain checker and uh, you'll save yourself a heap of cash. I'll see you next time. Cheers.